Now it's time to get to the cool stuff that Sony has given us with the new firmware. I already spilled the beans and mentioned that picture cache is the best new feature on the FX6, so we might as well begin there. Now, picture cache is useful whenever you know in advance that you won't have very much warning before something happens that you want to capture. For example, you may find yourself waiting for a volcano to explode, a performer to walk onto the stage, or in the example that I showed in my version 2.0 preview video, waiting for this osprey to take flight. Now, a shot of a bird just sitting on a limb isn't particularly interesting, so what I really wanted to capture was action, namely the osprey flying away into the bright blue sky. Experience tells me that the bird might sit there for an hour or more doing nothing but looking around. I know that I won't have any warning when he finally decides to fly away. So, no matter how fast I press the record button when I see him start to move, there's absolutely no way I could capture all the action, let alone have a few seconds of pre-roll before he flies. Now, obviously, I could just let the camera roll and roll and roll, hoping he takes off before the memory card fills up. But then afterwards, I'd have to deal with tons of useless footage in post. So the camera's new picture cache function gives us a much more efficient way of getting these types of shots. With picture cache turned on and the FX6 in standby mode, up to 31 seconds of full-blown 4K video and audio is constantly being buffered in the camcorder's memory. That means that everything that happens up to 31 seconds before the record button is pressed can now be captured and saved onto the memory card. And not only is the footage that was in the buffer captured, but the camera continues to record normally from that point forward until you decide to stop it. So in the case of the Osprey, I just aimed the camera, waited until he took flight, and then I casually pressed the record button to capture that key action onto the memory card. I didn't miss the shot, and I only rolled off about 45 seconds of footage, even though I had to patiently stand there and wait about 15 minutes before he flew away. Now, I just said that the FX6 could hold 31 seconds of 4K video in the buffer, but it doesn't have to be that long if you don't need that much pre-roll. In other words, picture cache isn't a setting that is just turned on or off. It's a variable function that lets you decide how much buffer you want to have for whatever shooting situation you find yourself in. For example, if I'm waiting for an animal to do something interesting, a 5 to 10 second buffer is probably more than enough. Now, there are several ways of activating picture cache, but let's use the menu method right now by going to Project and then scrolling down to Picture Cache Record. Obviously, the first menu is where you can turn cache on or off. And the second line is where you get to decide how much footage you want to hold in the buffer. The choices are short, medium, long, and maximum. After you make that selection, the third line on this page tells you how many seconds of footage will be saved in the buffer with that choice. For example, here we see that short will give us 5 seconds, medium will give us 10, long will give us 20, and max will give us a full 31 seconds of 4K, XAVCI, 10-bit, 422 video, and all four channels of audio. That is pretty amazing, and no other Sony camcorder can match those specifications. In this chart, you can see that small is always going to give you a five second cache, regardless of what frequency, codec, and resolution that you have chosen for the recording format. And medium will always give you 10 seconds. But large and maximum are dependent on the frequency setting. Notice that 59.94p is limited to 16 seconds, and 50p is limited to 20 seconds. But that's still very impressive. In fact, if you look at how many frames are being stored in the buffer, rather than how many seconds of video, you'll see that 59.94 is actually buffering 30% more frames than is being buffered with a 23.98 frequency. You'll also notice that you can never have more than 31 seconds of picture cache. Even if you drop down to an HD recording format, you're still not going to get more than 31 seconds. And really, that should be plenty. It's hard for me to imagine any shooting scenario where you'd need more than 31 seconds of cache. On my camera, I have a sign button number three program for picture cache. So anytime I want to turn it on, I just tap button number three, a green dot and the word cache become visible in my viewfinder, and the camera immediately starts buffering. Unfortunately, there is nothing shown on the screen to indicate how much video is being buffered. Is it five seconds, 10 seconds, or longer? The only way to find out is to go back to the picture cache menu and look at the settings, or even better, check the project status page. 
If you've seen the rest of my FX6 Masterclass, then you know that I normally have my camera set up to show the clip duration counter down in the corner. But if I had it set up to show time code, then you'd see the numbers running continuously. When picture cache is turned on, the time code automatically switches to free run mode, and there is nothing you could do to change that. So if you find that the endlessly changing numbers are distracting, then that is just one more reason to use the duration counter as I do. So with picture cache turned on, when I see something happen that I wanted to capture, but I wasn't rolling yet, all I have to do is press the record button to capture everything that was in the buffer, plus the camera will keep on recording uninterrupted until I decide to stop it. Before I press the record button, let me direct your eyeballs to the duration counter. Watch closely to see what happens when I press the record button. Instantly, I have a 31 second clip the moment I press the button because that's how much footage was already swirling around in the buffer. Now 31 seconds is a lot more buffer than I ever need. So usually I have my picture cache set to medium with one exception that we'll talk about in a few minutes. But here's where it gets very interesting because the FX6 can do something no other Sony camera has ever been able to do before. And that is the ability to use picture cache and SQ motion simultaneously. This is a huge game changer for people like me who frequently shoot slow motion footage of wildlife, aerospace, sports, and other unpredictable subject matter where we'd like to use picture cache and SQ motion at the same time. Now, previously, this has been impossible to do with every other Sony camera ever made. So this is one feature that puts the FX6 into a special category all of its own. You may have noticed that when I shot the Osprey, the camera was set up to record at 120 frames per second slow motion with picture cache turned on, which gave me a nice slow motion shot of the bird taking off. But I want to point out that this combination of settings didn't give me 31 seconds of cache when I was shooting the Osprey. Whenever you decide to use SQ motion and picture cache together, the maximum possible duration of the picture cache will be shortened because more frames of video need to be stored for every second of real time. When I shot the Osprey, my camera's frequency was set for 23.98, and SQ motion was set to capture 120 frames per second. So the maximum amount of picture cache available was only 3 seconds. Now at first, three seconds may sound too short to be useful, but in real world shooting, it's actually plenty good enough for most sports and wildlife shooting where you have your finger resting on the record button and you're standing by to capture the action as soon as you see it start to unfold. In this instance, three seconds of picture cache means that 360 frames of video were being buffered while the Osprey sat on the limb. And 360 frames of 23.98 video equals 15 seconds of finished video in post. So when I saw the bird start to fly and I pressed the button to start recording, then I instantly had about 15 seconds of video of the bird just sitting on the limb before it flew away. If you're thinking that you'd like more than three seconds of picture cache when you're using SQ motion, don't worry, there is a solution. If you look at this chart, you can see what the maximum duration of picture cache is for different frequencies when SQ motion is set for 120 frames per second. For 23.98, the maximum is 3 seconds, which equals 360 frames of video, which equals 15 seconds of full-blown 10-bit 422 4K XAVCI footage in post. But for 29.97, the maximum jumps to 5 seconds, which equals 600 frames, which equals 20 seconds of footage in post. For 25p, the maximum is also 5 seconds, which equals 600 frames, but due to the slower frame rate, those 600 frames work out to be 24 seconds of footage in post. But it still gets even better than that. If the frequency is set for 59.94, the maximum picture cache is 7 seconds, which equals 840 frames of video, which equals 14 seconds of footage in post. Now obviously, 14 seconds is a shorter duration than the other frequencies, so why is that better? Because we're talking about 14 seconds of 60p footage, that's twice as many frames per second as 29.97 and two and a half times more than 23.98. This column, the one that shows how many frames are captured with picture cache, is the part of the chart that matters most. If you want a longer duration buffer, then you need to capture more total frames. And then you can decide later in post how you want to play back those frames. For example, I don't know about you, but I never edit with a 60p timeline in post. Everything I produce is either made for delivery at 24p or 30p. So if I tell my NLE to interpret the 60p footage as 30p or 24p, I now have a much longer clip. Let's do the math. 
840 frames converted to 24p is 35 seconds versus only 15 seconds of cache if the camera had been set up for 23.98 when the footage was originally recorded. 840 frames converted to 30p is 28 seconds, versus only 20 seconds of cache if the camera had been set up for 29.97 when the footage was originally recorded. Now, is there any downside to converting 60p slow motion footage to a different playback frame rate in post? Not really. It's just an extra step in the workflow that takes just a few seconds. As you can see from these examples, when all other things are equal, you cannot tell the difference between a 120 FPS slow motion video that was captured with a base frequency of 59.94, 29.97, or 23.98 after each of them has been interpreted as 24p footage in post. But the difference in picture cache duration is significant. The bottom line is that if you want the longest duration possible for picture cache when you're using SNQ Motion, you should consider setting the camera's frequency for 59.94. Now, okay, technically, you can get an even bigger picture cache buffer if you set the camera for 50p, but the problem with that idea is that autofocus doesn't work when SNQ Motion is set for 120 frames per second and the frequency is set for 50p. So, in my book, that disqualifies 50p from consideration because I don't want to trade the amazing autofocus performance of the FX6 just for a few more seconds of picture cache.